A length of metal wire has a resistance of 10 ohms. Here it is. Calculate the resistance of the wire if its length is doubled or if its diameter is doubled. Now, to do this calculation, we need to have a mathematical relationship between resistance, length, and between resistance and the area of cross-section of the conductor. So let's start with length. So the resistance of a piece of wire is directly proportional to its length. So that means if you double the length of the wire, then you're going to double the resistance. Why is that? Remember that electrons are flowing down this conductor, bumping into all the positive metal ions, bouncing around, but generally moving forward. That's a current. Each collision they have with a metal ion means that they can lose a little bit of energy as they transfer their electrical energy to thermal energy of the lattice. And that means we heat up the wire slightly. And that process of transfer of energy is caused by the resistance of the wire. OK, so if you double the length, then you're going to double the number of collisions of these electrons with the positive metal ions. And so have double the energy loss, if you like. So that's why the resistance doubles if you double the length. So we can say here that R for resistance is directly proportional to the length L. And so if you multiply the length by 2, that means you're going to do the same thing to the resistance. We're going to multiply the resistance by 2 as well. That's what directly proportional means. If you, if you triple the length, you will triple the resistance. If you halve the length, you'll halve the resistance. So here that's pretty straightforward because we will get 10 ohms. We've got double the length. And so our new resistance is 20 ohms because it's double the length. What about the case when we have doubled the diameter? So we have times 2 on the diameter. Now we've got to be a bit careful here. The, if you double the diameter, then what happens to the area of cross-section? Well, we know that the area of cross-section of a circle for this circular wire is pi times r squared, where r is the radius. So if you times the diameter by 2, then you're actually multiplying the radius by 2 as well. If you're multiplying the radius by 2, then what happens to the area? Well, watch out here because there's that squared term in the pi r squared area of a circle. So if you double the radius, you're actually timesing by 2 squared because of that square there. So you're actually multiplying by a factor of 4 on the area. So that's multiplying by 4 on the area. Hope that makes sense. We've doubled the diameter. We've therefore doubled the radius. And because we've doubled the radius, the area is doubled squared, if that makes sense, which is times 4 on the area. So we have got four times the area along which those electrons can now travel. That's four times as many paths. And so it's much easier for them to travel down. Four times as easy. Now the resistance will therefore decrease because it's much easier for the electrons to flow. There are more paths. In fact, the mathematical relationship is this. Resistance is inversely proportional to the conductor's 
and I'll say cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area. Inversely proportional. So R is inversely proportional to the area. That's squiggle or alpha sine 1 over area. So if you double the area, what happens to resistance? Well, if you double the area, you actually 1 over 2. That's halving the resistance. If you times the area by 4, like we have, then the resistance is quartered. And so if we've got times 4 the area, then we're going to be doing the opposite because it's inversely proportional. We're going to be dividing by 4 on the resistance because it's inversely proportional. So therefore, our resistance here is R equals 10 ohms divided by 4, which equals 2.5 ohms. Ah, so we have doubled the diameter. That means we've quadrupled the area. And that means that the resistance has fallen by a factor of four uh, because there are four times as many paths along which the electrons can travel and the resistance is therefore four times as small.